Lucy the hominid fossil. What was she? The Creation versus Evolution Debate by Charlie Willis. Creationists believe that the earth, all the animals, plants, etc., were created by a god with a purpose. Also known as intelligent design, creationists are convinced that our world did not come about by chance and that it is less than 10,000 years old. On the other hand, we have evolution, pioneered by scientists like Charles Darwin in the 19th century. According to evolutionists, the Earth is millions of years old. The living things on Earth today have gradually evolved due to processes such as natural selection and survival of the fittest to the life forms that we see today. Evolution is evident through the fossil records and more. Both creationists and evolutionists would hold true to microevolution, which is a small series of changes in a population's allele frequency, such as a population's color going from green beetles to mostly brown beetles, a small change. Macroevolution, on the other hand, are big changes, like apes evolving into man. It is a change above the species level and develops separate gene pools. Through the incompleteness of the supposed evolutionary fossil record, specifically with hominid fossils such as Lucy, we can see that the fossil record in no way proves that apes evolved into humans, but yet that God created mankind with a purpose. Lucy is the name given to a hominid fossil discovered by Professor Donald Johansson in 1974, Ethiopia. She is claimed to be a transition fossil between apes and man. Evolutionists also believe her to be 3.2 million years old and a 40% complete fossil. Evolutionists say that Lucy had ape-like features and was starting to develop human-like features showing this process of evolution. She had a ape-like skull, jaws, as well as teeth. Also, her brain case was no bigger than that of a chimpanzee. Her jaw was hefty, her forehead was low, and she had long, dangly arms. And as I said, they also think she was starting to develop human-like features. The shape and position of Lucy's pelvis have led some scientists to believe that she had a fully upright walk, just like a human. The knee and ankle also might suggest this bipedal walking. Lucy spent lots of her time in the trees, and it is possible that it is up in the trees where she developed bipedal walking, since there were some branches that were too thin for her to swing from. So it is here in the treetops where apes might have developed the ability to walk upright like humans. Creationists believe that the evolutionists claim that Lucy was a transition fossil from ape to man is just not logical. From the neck up, Lucy resembled a gorilla, and from the neck down, she was just as non-human. There have been several fossils of the Australopithecus species, as was Lucy, that have been discovered, but they are more recent than Lucy. According to evolutionist logic, these um, fossils should represent creatures that would have had even a better and more human-like walking ability. However, these fossils tell of creatures that only swang in the trees. They had no upright walking ability whatsoever. This does not fit with evolutionist logic. And these fossils showed creatures of long fingers and curved toes. Also, Lucy and some of those in her species could possibly have been able to walk upright to an extent, but this is not that significant. There are other modern-day chimps called pygmy chimps that have this ability anyway. Those who believe Lucy could walk upright base this theory primarily on her hip and knee joints. However, other scientists, like Professor Charles Oxnard, believe that these specific parts of the fossil bear little resemblance to chimps and little resemblance to humans. He believes them to be very unique. Also, Johansson found this knee joint a mile and a half away from the other bones 
in a layer of rock 200 feet deeper. The knee might not even belong with the rest. Evolutionists see a world very different than do believers in intelligent design. They see a world of science and the process of evolution. Whether we understand it all now, evolutionists say that this does not matter, and eventually we will understand how the earth and life scientifically came to be. Just like we no longer need a god or goddess of childbirth or god and goddess of crops because we understand how these processes fit with science, we will someday have no need for a creator god. On the other hand, creationists look at the world we live in and realize that there is no way it could have come about without an intelligent designer. It is impossible, scientifically impossible, for purely random chances to produce the complexity and structure in nature. The many components of nature could not have developed randomly because they all require each other to occur in the first place. Creationists believe that science itself proclaims the truth of a creator. Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. This verse illustrates how the creation God has made is for us, so that anyone who looks at it can see that he is a creator and that there is a purpose behind every animal and feature and plant and a purpose behind science so that we have no excuse not to believe in him, a creator God.